Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve to our temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise be fed. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in heaven. Our soul waits 
praise for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Misericordius Domini, the third Sunday after Easter, is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. 
and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. They, there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for The epistle is from 1 Peter, chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Holy 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing out loud the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And then, of course, there are not so good shepherds. You can tell a lot about the kind of shepherd you have, not by how that shepherd behaves, what that shepherd does for you when things are going well, but rather what the shepherd does for you when things get difficult, when there are challenges. The kind of shepherd you have can be known by how he acts towards you, what he gives to you, how he shepherds you when things are difficult. The hired hand flees when he sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep behind because he cares nothing for the sheep. A good shepherd stays with his sheep even when the wolf comes. Even if it means laying down his life, allowing the wolf to snatch his life away in order to protect the sheep. That's the difference. So you can tell a lot about the kind of shepherds you have based off of how valuable they are to you when things are not going well. Does that shepherd provide you comfort when you are sick? Does that shepherd lead you away from temptation and into virtuous living? Does that shepherd forgive you your sins or does he hold them against you? Does that shepherd only want you to support him with money and with resources and time? Or does that shepherd want you to stay with him even when it means suffering, even when it means bearing a cross, even when it means persecution, even when it means being rejected by your friends or your family? Does the shepherd stay with you through those sorts of things Or is the shepherd only there for you when times are good? Does he only provide words of counsel for health or for wealth or for prosperity? You can tell a lot about the kind of shepherd you have by what the shepherd says to you in every situation. Does he stay with you in sickness and in health, richer and poorer? Or does he flee when things get difficult? Does he run and hide when life puts up challenges? Ultimately, the kind of shepherd that you need is a shepherd that leads you through all of your life, both good and ill, health and wealth and sickness and poverty. You need a shepherd that can lead you through the ups and downs, the hills and valleys, the straight path and the crooked road. You need a shepherd that will lead you through even the valley of the shadow of death and lead you through into a promised land. Rich green pastures, verdant pastures. The kind of shepherd you need is a shepherd who is with you in all things at all times and who actually answers the life's, life's greatest challenges, the most significant difficulties, the greatest threats. You need a savior, a shepherd savior, who is willing to lay down his life for you, his sheep. And that's precisely who Jesus is for you. He is your good shepherd, as you can see in our window, who picks you up, and puts you in his arms, carries you on his shoulder, protects you from all that would hurt or harm you, not only in this life, but all that would hurt and harm you, namely destroying your faith in him. He protects you, he guides you, he strengthens you, he nourishes you. 
and he protects you. That's the kind of shepherd you have, a good shepherd, a shepherd who doesn't give up on you even when you give up on him, a shepherd who forgives you even when you sin against him, a shepherd who gives you life even though you are deserving nothing but death, a good shepherd, not a hired hand, not one who flees, who leaves you behind when things get difficult, when things go awry, when life throws up its biggest challenges. A shepherd who's with you in all things, in every trial and tribulation, in every joy and in every great moment of triumph. A shepherd who loves you and loves you so much that he would give you everything that is his, and even his, in his life. He would lay that life down to redeem you, his beloved sheep. That's why today, Good Shepherd Sunday, Misericordius Domini, is so beloved, because the most beloved of the Psalms by many, Psalm 23, we get to sing today. And then we sing all the psalm versions of that song. We hear other Good Shepherd texts from Ezekiel, for example, and of course Jesus in John chapter 10. Like a shepherd, he gently leads us through everything, even through the midst of this present, we'll call it tribulation. As we are unable to gather together as a congregation, as we're out of necessity, listening to his word being preached <laughs> through your television or tablet or phone. Yes, it's not the same, but Jesus the shepherd is leading you through it even the same. Because he's promised that wherever his word is preached, wherever forgiveness of sins is declared, wherever you are commended again to your baptism that's baptized into him, there he is with you in the midst of that. Two or three gathered in his name around his word, there he is shepherding you, guiding you. It might seem as if Jesus is somehow not as much with you today because you're not here in this sanctuary or not gathered here before this altar. This isn't true. He's just as present, just as shepherding for you today as he is when you are able to be here in the presence of the company of saints and to kneel before his altar and receive together one communion under his body and blood. It's not the same to you, but it's just the same. It's the one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. That same God and Father, that same Son, that same baptism is proclaimed to you here today, one. It seems different to you, but it's the same. And it's the same shepherd who is guiding you through, even now in the midst of this present difficulty. And he will lead us through. He'll lead us again to gather once again before his altar to receive from him his gifts. He'll lead us through even sickness and death. He'll lead some through COVID-19 to his promised green pastures, to the heavenly mansions, to the promised land. He's promised it, and he's faithful to his promises. He is your good shepherd, and he will do it. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all who have been baptized at the still waters of the font, that they would remain in the green pastures of the Holy Church, where they want for nothing and have their souls restored as their Good Shepherd ever cares for their every spiritual need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our synod president, John, our district president, Peter, our circuit visitor, and Christopher, our pastor, that through their preaching and teaching, we would be led in the paths of righteousness for the sake of Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the members of this parish and all Christians everywhere, that we would receive strength to resist sin and temptation in our lives, fearing no evil as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, knowing that our Good Shepherd is with us to heal and comfort us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, a cheerful hope in his mercy, and a sincere love for God and neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those whom God has placed in authority over us, especially our president, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve with integrity and honor, always seeking the common welfare of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for all those who have requested our prayers, and all those whom we name, now name out loud, that they would be well cared for and restored to health, or given grace to accept their time of tribulation with courage and hope, knowing that they always remain in their Good Shepherd's loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who desire to come to the table their Lord and Shepherd has prepared for them, that they would once again receive the holy sacrament of his true body and blood in faith and to the eternal nourishment of their souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives, that we would, together with the saints who have gone before us, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for us and who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.